Hi everyone, welcome back to Dev Doge Academy and welcome back to Introduction to Programming using Java. Now we are going to talk about another loop structure that's called for. Uh, but before we do that, and we are going to use this exercise, so what I'm going to do here is uh, hold Alt and then I will click uh, right here. It closed everything else. You can right click and then close other tabs as well. It works the same way. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is use this example, but since we are doing a different uh, loop structure, I'm going to create another package here, right click, then package, and this one will be uh, whiles, we uh, cannot use while because uh, it's a reserved keyword, so whiles, and then just hold these two classes, you see, just uh, hold shift and select both of them, and drag and drop into whiles, and then you click refactor. Okay, then I'm going to do the following, right click again, new, package, just remove whiles and force. Okay, now we have uh, two side packages. They are inside the loop uh, topic that we are talking about. Okay, so what is for? For is basically another way to iterate over something. It's extremely useful when you want to have like a counter. For example, take a look at the, the code we have here at while 01. We are just counting from 0 to 10. In this case, 0 to 9 because it's not uh, less or equals than. So what's happening here is that we have a counter, and then we have the condition, and we have here the, the thing that we are incrementing one by one. Basically, we have the counter plus plus that used to be counter equals counter plus one. So as you can see, we have one, two, we have three lines, uh, including if we include the while to do just a simple counting. Now the for is going to simplify that for us. So let's create here a new class, right click uh, over fours and then new class, and then let's call for zero one, BSVM. Okay, the first thing that we need to learn about this structure is its syntax. So basically the syntax is the following. You have for, open and close parentheses, add two semicolons, and then open and close curly braces. Okay, so it looks a little bit complicated, but you can get to the, used to it pretty, pretty, pretty fast. So what you have to remember is that you need, you actually don't, but just remember, you have to use three different spaces here. The first part is the variable declaration. Remember that I said that we have three parts in the while. We have the variable declaration, we have the condition, and then we have the thing that's incrementing. Is the same thing here. We have to create a variable declaration, and then we have to use the condition, and then how much we are going to increment uh, the the variable. So let's do this. First, we have to create or initialize and create the variable. Int, if we want to just do regular count, then the name. So you can see that I'm creating a variable here. I'm declaring a variable and I'm going to initialize as well. So if we go back to while 01, this is what I'm doing. Now we need the second part. The second part is the condition. If you press Ctrl Alt L, it's going to organize your code a little bit and it's uh, easier to, to see what's happening. So you have the first part that basically you are declaring the variable and you are initializing the, the state in memory with zero. Then you need to apply the condition. What's the condition? I want this counter to be this for loop to keep going on until the counter is lower than 10. So it's less than 10. Variable declaration, condition, and then remember that I said we have to say how much are we going to increment this for. So I want this to keep going on until it's lower than 10, but I want to you to increment one by one. So we can do in two ways, counter, counter plus, one. So as you can see here, this is what we were doing before. But if you want to increment by one, we can also use the shorter version. So here I can replace by counter plus plus. Okay, and now out counter, and then I just call the variable here. 
Wait, can I use this counter outside of the, the for loop? No, the counter is a local variable. So since we are declaring, we are creating this right here in this for, it will be alive while in between these two curly braces. If you try to use here salt counter, you can see that it's not going to let you do anything because this does not exist for Java. So remove it. Okay, so let's ex execute Ctrl Shift F10. And as you can see, we have exactly the same result as we, we did before. But the difference is that these three parts we are doing in one line. Now, one thing that you have to be very careful uh, is uh, regarding this condition right here. Sometimes you might get a little bit confusing how it's going to start. So I, I advise you to first try to draw in a paper and then you try to debug because you might think that this is going to execute in one time, basically before you reach this line, but this is not actually true. So once you start here, I will press Shift F, uh, F9, you can see that the counter does not exist yet. So the counter will be created and then if you press F8, can you see that the counter is zero? So actually this counter plus plus will not be executed um, up, um, will not be executed before you go back to the for declaration. So until you do one full iteration, it's not going to be executed. So I will press F8 and then it came back. And now it's checking. So is counter that's zero lower than 10? Yes. So then uh, now uh, we are increasing one. And as you can see, oh, there's one. So it will keep doing this all the way until it reaches 10, so 9, and now it is, uh, when it moved to 10, it came out of this as false, that's why it's not being executed anymore. So if you want to check if this is executed before or after, you can do the following. So int counter is 0, while counter is lower than 0, just counter plus plus. So let's see, Ctrl Shift F10. As you can see, the program was not executed. It means that this condition will be evaluated in the first iteration. So int counter starting with zero, and then is counter less than zero? No, it's, it's equal to zero. That's why this is not even executed. So if I type one here, Ctrl Shift F10, you are going to notice that the counter is zero. So by the time it comes back again, so let's add here, shift F9. So counter is zero. It's going to do the evaluation. Zero is lower than one. Yes. So just go over it. And then by the time we come back, it will increment by one. We don't see here in memory, but then the order is going to be incremented by one. And then it will check. So the counter is zero. But if I press F8 again, you will see that it's not executed. So we actually don't see it happening here in the debug mode. But uh, the second iteration, it's one and one is not less than one. That's why we are going outside the for loop. So this is the for loop. Probably if you search on the internet, you are going to see something like this. People don't use like long variables here. They use a short version of the variable for iteration, the, just the first letter. So it's pretty common if you press shift F6 because I want to rename everything that's counter. You see that we have already here uh, an option for us. It's I. So this is a very common standard. Usually when you see for loops, uh, we are going to learn about nested for loops. You are going to see I and J. So I just stands for like uh, iteration, but J, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but uh, you are going to see this everywhere. So as a Java developer, this will be pretty familiar after a couple months in the in the work. Okay, so this is the for loop. Of course, we are going to practice a lot with it, but for now, I just want you to remember that uh, syntax is for. You have to create a variable and initialize. If you do not initialize here, you do have a problem. It's saying, hey, this variable might not be initialized. When you give zero, then you have something memory to work with. And then the second part is the condition. And the third part is the incrementer. So basically we're just adding one 
each time this loop is completed. So that's it for now. Let's continue in the next video. Bye bye.